This is the first save of the first game of Victoria 2 that I ever played. You can tell that I wasn't very good because I went to war with Mexico in the year 1843, took half of Texas, and lost nearly my entire military while mobilized doing it. You can see a lack of knowledge about the way that Victoria 2 is supposed to be played because I wasn't funding my administration and I wasn't funding my education. Also, the American economy was just in shambles, with basically no factories, even after almost 10 years of playing. But for some reason, I decided to stick with this game. And I don't know how it happened, but somehow I was able to create an amazing community surrounding this game. And for that, I am forever thankful. So next week, Victoria 3 comes out. And for the casual Paradox enjoyer, that may mark the end of Victoria 2. And because of that, I just want to give my final thoughts on this game. And I've decided that there is no better way to do that than through tier lists. So I know what you're thinking. SGT, this is a cringe idea for a final Victoria 2 video. But like, I've played Victoria 2 for over 1100 hours, and one thing that has always stood out to me is the pop system, because it's so unique and so prevalent in this game that you can't really play the game without knowing about it. So today we're going to rank all the pops. First pop that I think we need to talk about is the Artisan. Now the Artisan is responsible for making all your goods at the beginning of the game, uh, but they're kind of mid they kind of, uh, at the end of the game, they get destroyed by factories and they fall off and they uh, don't really contribute a ton to your economy except for the increasing the size of the pie chart that says life needs not met. So just because of their contributions, we'll put them in the D tier. Next up, we have the landowner or the aristocrat if you're going to play vanilla Victoria 2. I think the aristocrat is pretty bad. Basically, they kind of act as like money sinks in their economy. Basically, they oversee the land. They own the land and the RGOs, and they hire the farmer pop and the slave pop to work in their farms. But they get to go in F tier because, oh, I messed him up. They kind of just slow down the economy and reduce the flow of money. So they're in the F tier. The aristocrat pop takes advantage of the slave pop, and we're going to put the slave pop in the E tier, just one step above the aristocrat. The problem with the slave pop is it doesn't consume anything, so it really doesn't contribute to the economy that much besides for putting money in the aristocrat's pocket, which is not good. So that's why it's very beneficial in Victoria 2 to get rid of slavery as soon as possible. Then they'll be upgraded to the farmer, which is a better pop. Next up, we have the capitalist. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with the capitalists because all throughout this game, they build stupid factories that aren't profitable uh, but they do build factories and that can help you increase your industrial score B tier we got the intellectual next the intellectual is the main way you get research points within the game you can't really play the game without them so they're in a tier then you have the clerk so the clerk is the second way that you can get research points within Victoria 2 or actually the third if you include literacy they kind of increase the efficiency of your factory but I can never seem to get enough of them and just because I have a personal vendetta against them they go in the C tier next up we have the craftsman and the craftsman is just words cannot describe how much I love the craftsman a fantastic pop makes a ton of money makes your factories work get as many of these as humanly possible craftsman s tier simply the best pop in victoria 2 then we got the farmer pop so the farmer pop they do consume things they produce agricultural goods at kind of low rate rgos i'm gonna put them in the d tier along with the artisan because the rgos they produce aren't great but they're also just not like bad for the economy like the ones in the lower tier the laborer produces some of the best rgos in the game and that makes them much higher than the farmer even though they are very similar i'm gonna put them in the b tier next we have like the government pops we'll start with the bureaucrat so the bureaucrat is a really cool pop they basically like collect taxes and do government stuff. The bureaucrat in Vanilla Victoria 2 at least is really cool because in like your capital cities or in like a colonial oversight area, they'll just start piling up and you can see them go up in the pie chart. I'm thinking probably B tier for the bureaucrat. Then we have the soldier and the officer. And I'm going to say... You never really care about the officers. If you want a larger military, you're always like, promote soldiers, promote soldiers. The officer is just like a B-grade soldier, and thus we're going to put them in D tier. And then we have the soldier. The soldier is the reason that I've been able to do all the crazy stuff in my Victoria 2 A to Z series. So they're going to go in A tier. You need soldiers to have a strong army, and without them, you are lost. 
So yeah, this is my final pop tier list after many, many years of playing Victoria 2. Next up, we got the RGOs. So these are generated by pretty much only farmers or laborers. And they're overseen by the aristocrats. But remember, we hate the aristocrats around here. So I've sorted these out by the more homeland goods on the top. And then we slowly move into things that you colonize for at the bottom. So the first RGO we're going to look at is timber. Very prevalent, especially in Russia and the UK. Uh, I never really seem to have a shortage with timber, but I don't really love it. So it's just going to go in the B tier. Okay, so the next four are pretty much one and the same. We've got livestock, C tier, wheat, C tier, fruit, C tier and fish C tier and the reason for this is because they're all foods the pops consume them most of them can be put into a canned goods factory and you can make canned food that way very helpful very critical to running a good economy then we have the most dreaded RGO of all the RGOs it is wool Wool is pretty terrible, I'm not going to lie. It's not used in any factories. The artisans use it to make clothes sometimes, but nonetheless, it is F tier. It is terrible. Next up, we have the industrial goods. The reason they're in this section is because they are produced in large quantities by, like, you know, Prussia and that kind of thing, even at the beginning of the game. They're both S tier. Coal, iron, just the most critical components to industrialization because they produce steel. Steel's used for everything. Then we've got cotton. I don't know how to feel about cotton, so I'm going to put it in the D tier. Like, I'm pretty sure it's important to economies, but I never think about it, so it must not be that important. Then we have tropical wood. Tropical wood, very good for economies. If you just colonize one province with it, it'll, like, prop up the entire economy of, like, a Belgium or a Sardinia Piedmont then you don't have to worry too much about taxing your people. So it's A tier, great resource. Then we have sulfur, which is a vital good in producing explosives. I'm thinking that's A tier. It's good, but it's not as good as iron and coal. Rubber is critical to late game industrial goods like, you know, cars and uh, airplanes. Um, it's not my favorite though, so it's going to go in B tier. Then we have tea, because it's vastly inferior to coffee. We're going to put it in F tier. Then we have coffee, S tier, all the way. I'm kidding, they're both D tier. The pops consume them, but you don't make that much money off them. Now that I think about it, tobacco, that's D tier also. Just another one of those goods that's pretty good at the beginning of the game, but falls off. Then we have dyes, and I think dyes are going to be an E tier, because you kind of want to replace them in the late game, because you can just make synthetic dyes in a factory anyway, and that's probably easier and more profitable. Next up is oil, just because I'm an American. You know, you know the Americans love oil, so S tier. But for real, oil, in my opinion, is one of the most important resources because you need it to have a navy, and pretty much every nation in Victoria 2 does need a navy, so it's S tier. Precious metals are just free money because there's not really inflation in Victoria 2, so they kind of don't have any negative effect on your economy. It's just like a massive boost, so A tier. Actually, B tier. Money is not that valuable in Victoria 2. That leaves us with opium and silk. To be honest, I didn't even know opium was a... Uh, an RGO in Victoria too, so it's going to go with the other vices, coffee, tea, uh, tobacco in D tier. And then we have silk. Silk is very good. Um, it's going to go in A tier. And that's my final Victoria 2 RGO tier list. And finally, we have factory goods. Now, I've kind of sorted these by military goods at the bottom and then kind of the mid-era industrial goods. And then at the beginning, these are goods that you can produce from day one unless you, uh, you know, don't have the tax. Canned food. Instantly, S tier. Canned food is awesome. It is uh, the number one thing you need to grow your navy and your army, and it feeds all your pops. Amazing. S tier. Concrete. Pretty boring industrial good, so it gets to go in B tier. You make it, you use it, you love it. It's not anything special. I had to look this one up, but actually it's liquor, so um, I'm not really sure where to put liquor. I don't really produce it in any large quantity, so I guess it's going to go in D tier. Let's put wine there as well, just for the heck of it. You know, they're goods. They make your country money. Your pops love them, but they're just not like that integral to industrialization or anything like that. Next up, we have furniture. It's a consumer good. Pretty much every type of pop needs it uh, so they don't sit on the floor. So it's a C tier. I mean, you can make money off it. Next up is fertilizer. Farmers need it. It uses sulfur. Uh... You know, honestly, I think it should be D tier. It's not that important, I don't think. Machine parts. By far, the thing I run out of most in my playthroughs. Uh, definitely S tier. Really the most integral portion of industrialization. 
Then we have glass. It's kind of another critical good for further steps in the production chain. So it's B tier. The wood that comes out of sawmills is called lumber. It's kind of another one of those intermediary goods, B tier. Now we have steel. I'm very tempted to put steel in the S tier, but uh, I think that it's probably just A tier. Nah, who am I kidding? It's S tier. There are so many great industrial goods. Next up is clothing. It's another consumer good. It consumes cotton. It's C tier. Paper is like a government good, and it's used for like pretty much every pop in the game as well. C tier. You, you see where I'm going? This is just stuff you have to produce and you don't want to produce, and it doesn't help you that much, but it makes your factories a little bit of money. So explosives are used within mines that produce iron and coal, which are vital. So therefore, they get to be A tier. Luxury clothes are worn by officers within your military, so they are necessary, but they're not like totally important, so we're going to put them in D tier, mostly because the main consumers are just capitalists and aristocrats. Like, you need a couple pieces of luxury clothes, but you don't need that many. Luxury furniture, on the other hand, is pretty much completely useless, E tier. So then we have synthetic oil, and synthetic oil is really weird, because I said that like real oil was pretty good in my RGO tier list, but synthetic oil, on the other hand, I feel is a D tier good, because it uses coal, and coal might be more valuable than oil at some phases in the game, so it's, it's not a perfect system. So then you have synthetic dye, but I think synthetic dye is much better than synthetic oil because you can generally change your synthetic dye into either iron or coal when you're colonizing. So you generally get a positive out of using these synthetic dye factories. Also in the late game, you don't need that much dye, so you put a little bit into this factory and it's fine. Electrical goods, how about them? A late game good. You need them for telephones and radios and maybe airplanes. Uh, I think they're just C tier. The only reason they're C tier too is because telephones are required good to build a good navy, so you kind of do need them. Otherwise, they're not that useful. How about fuel? Fuel is critical to building a navy, so it's going to go in A tier. You know I like the navy. Then we have tanks. I never use tanks. F tier. They're just like not that good in Victoria 2. How about them automobiles? I'm thinking ugh, it's a B grade consumer good. D. Radios. You're exactly there. Not very useful, but you exist. All that's left now is military goods. So we have ammunition. Uh, a tier. You need it for a military. Artillery. A tier. Need it for a military. And finally, small arms. You need it for a military, so they're A tier. Then you've got airplanes. Airplanes are going to be A tier too uh, because they are much better than cavalry when you put them in your divisions. You can see how I like to play Victoria too: a strong military and uh, a strong economy based on industrial goods. Then you've got the Clipper Shipyard. And oh boy, the Clipper Shipyard drives me nuts. It is Pretty much constantly a massive money sink because you don't need clippers for your navy anymore after a certain point. You don't need clipper convoys after like 1850. So from that point onward, your capitalists just throw money into them and you don't get any return. So F tier for clipper convoys. Steamer convoys, on the other hand, critical component to build a navy. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you do lose a lot of money on them, but it's okay because they're A tier, I think. Now, steamer convoys, on the other hand, you do use to build your navy. Uh, they are like a giant pit of money at the beginning of the game, but if you do have a navy, they will sustain those factories in the late game. So B tier for them just because you do lose money. And telephones are just like one of these luxury consumer goods, but you do need them to build a navy, so they are A tier. And this is my factory goods tier list. Anyway, folks, if you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate you. Thank you for sticking with me through this little period of time where I haven't been uploading as much. I don't know how much I'm going to be uploading in the future. I definitely want to make some Victoria 3 content when the game comes out, but I'm also not really ready to give up on Victoria 2 either. I love the game, and it is a lot of fun. So let's just keep moving forward. Keep having fun. And thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate it.